Okay, question number three is cost allocation. We happen to have an asset, $7,200, and it's going to last a number of years. And in fact, if we look at the problem, we find out that this asset is going to last for five years. And we believe at the end of its useful life, the five years, it's going to have a value, what we call a salvage value, of $1,200. Now the options would be to expense it in the year that we acquire the asset, but the problem is if we expensed it, the cost would all go to the income statement and the balance sheet wouldn't show any asset. Well, we could wait until the end of the five years, but again, that wouldn't be matching revenues and expenses. We would have an asset for five years and then take the expense. The best way is to allocate the cost over the period of time over the five years. And what cost are we going to be allocating? This asset cost is $7,200, but we expect at the end to get back $1,200. So how much are we going to be allocating over the five years? $7,200 cost, we're going to get back $1,200. Well, that means that there's $6,000 we need to allocate to the five years. How much will we allocate to each year? That depends on the method of accounting or depreciation we use. There are three methods that we will look at. Actually, there are four, and there are probably even more than that, but our textbook only takes a look at three. The three are straight line, and we looked at this a little bit in chapter number three. We take the cost less the salvage over the useful life. The second method is DDB. That stands for Double Declining Balance. And what you do, it's kind of a two-part calculation. You have to, in the parentheses here, take two times one over the useful life. Our case, that would be one-fifth. Two times one-fifth. Two times one-fifth is two-fifths. And then you would take that times the book value. What's book value? Book value is the cost of the asset minus the accumulated depreciation to date. And we'll look at that in just a second. The last one is something called units of production. Units of production, we have to come up with an activity rate. We will take the cost less the salvage, so 7,200 less 1,200 over the total activity. Now we'll see the difference between the units of production and the straight line method, straight line, we're using the five years. Units production, up front we say, how many units is this asset going to produce? And in our particular case, if you look at the problem, it says that we're going to produce 100,000 units. So we take the 72 minus the 12 over 100,000 units. That would give us the activity rate. And so however much we use in that year, determines the amount of depreciation. So, straight line, same amount each year. Double declining, this is called an accelerated method. More depreciation in early years, less in later years. An activity rate, or units of production, we depreciate it as we use it. If we use it a lot, a lot of depreciation. If we use it very little, no depreciation. So, Come on back, I'm going to put the answers to each of these on the board as to how to calculate out the depreciation under each of these three methods. Okay, the straight line method, here is the formula. So we take the cost of 7,200 less the salvage of 1,200, that's what we're going to get back at the end, and we're going to use it for five years. So that's 6,000 over five or $1,200 a year. If we were to buy this partly through the year, in the first year, we would only take that portion of the year. In our case, we bought it at the beginning of the year. So we take a full year in year one, and then you'll see year two, year three, year four, and year five. So we would take $6,000 over the five-year period of time. If we sold it at the end, and our estimate was correct, we're going to get $1,200 back. We have allocated $6,000 of the 72, and I get $1,200 back at the end, and everything is just fine. So this is the straight line method. Okay, the second method is double declining balance, or two times the straight line rate. 
Uh, the formula is 2 times 1 over the useful life. The useful life is 5 years, so we take 2 times 1 fifth. That will give us 2 fifths. And I like to convert that to a fraction, which would be 40%. How do I get 40%? I divide 5 into 2, and that gives me 0.4, or 40%. Now, sometimes this could have been 150% declining balance. That would have been 1.5. Or it could have been 125%, 1.25. But we're working with double declining. Double, it will be two times the useful life. So I have 40% all the way down. You'll notice that you're going to take 40% of the book value. Now, many students get confused right here. And they want to take the $7,200 less the $1,200. You do not deduct the salvage value in double declining balance. What you do is you take the 40% times the book value. What is book value? It is the cost less the accumulated depreciation to date. So in year one, we take 40% times the 7,200 cost, and the depreciation is $2,880. What happens in year two? In year two, we take the 40%, but the book value is no longer 7,200 because we've depreciated off 2880. The book value is 72 less than 2880, or 4,320. 40% times that is 1728. That's the depreciation expense in year two. What do we do in year three? Hmm. We're going to take 40%. But 40% times what figure? And what are we going to do in year four and year five? Come on back and I'll show you the answers. OK, let's take a look at year three. Year three, we have depreciated it 2880 in year one, 1728 in year two. What we will do is we will take the 7,000 less the accumulated depreciation will be 2880 and the 1728. And we now have a book value of $2,592. We take 40% of that, and in year three, we have depreciation expense of $1,037. If we continue to use this, we come on down to year four, 40%, deduct out the additional depreciation from year three, and I get $1,555. If I take 40% of that, I get $622. But stop. Even though we've not used the salvage value in the calculation, we cannot depreciate an asset below salvage value. If the book value is $1,555, the salvage value is $1,200, we only have an additional $3,000. $355 to depreciate. So this $622, that's going to be $355. That's going to be the depreciation in year four. What about year five? Year five, I can't de take any depreciation at all. Why? It's because I've already depreciated down to the salvage value. So the key to double declining balance. First of all, two times the straight line rate. That is one over the useful life. One fifth, that's two fifths. That's 40%. Take that times the book value. The book value is going down each year. Even though we've not used the salvage value in the calculation, we cannot go below the salvage value. So in later years, you've got to be watching out that you do not go below a book value of $1,200 in this case. And even though it's got a five-year life, in year five, we didn't depreciate it. It's an accelerated method. More depreciation in earlier years, less in later years. We're going to go to the last depreciation method, and that's the units of production. OK, units of production, the last gap method, or generally accepted accounting principle method that we'll look at is the units of production. That formula is costless salvage over the total output. Again, we've got an asset that's 7,200. We have a salvage that's 1,200. But in this case, instead of allocating it like we did under straight line over the useful life, the life is defined not in years, but in total output, 100,000 units. 
So our activity rate is six cents. What we then do is look at each activity in the year that we're looking at and take that six cents times the total activity. Well, here we're fine that the first year we had 14,000 activities. So we're going to have six cents times that. Year two, 20,000 times six cents. Look what happens in year three. We only went down to 2,000 activity units. What's going to happen with depreciation expense? It's going to go down that year. It's going to go back up, though, in the next year because we had 40,000 units we produced. In year five, 7,000. Now, I know the useful life was five years, but because we didn't use it as much as we thought we would, we continue to depreciate this after five years. Why? It's because we're not concerned with the number of years. We're concerned with the total output. So come on back, and I'll show you the calculations here in a second. OK, I have listed out the year and the production. I've listed out the fact that we're going to depreciate at a rate of six cents per unit. So we take 14,000 year one times six cents, get 840. We do the same basic procedure in year two. What did we produce? Six cents, depreciation $1,200. Year three, I told you earlier, <clears throat> we went down to 2,000 units. So only 120. Year four, 2,400. Year five, 40, uh, 420. Year six, $600. Now, in year seven, we actually produced 30,000. But I have written through the 30,000 and put 7,000. Why is that? If you add up the units in one, two, three, four, five, six, we would end up with 93,000 units. 30 and 93 is over the 100,000 that we were going to have the total output. So that means in year seven, we're only going to have 7,000 units at the six cents. The other thing, a, a way to self-check this, is add up your depreciation expense, and I'll find out that there's only 6,000 here. Because what we were going to do, we were going to get $1,200 back at the end. 7,200 less the 12 we get back at the end in the salvage, the 6,000 we need to allocate. And sure enough, that's what we have right here. So this is units of production. It's an activity rate. Now, in your book, there is one mention to an income tax method. We're not going to be studying that because this is financial accounting, not tax accounting. So I will not ask you questions on that. But it is a statutory method that dictates the useful life. It ignores salvage value. And it is much like the DDB method, double declining balance. More in earlier years and less in later years.